Propion aldehyde has very specialized uses and none of which I'm very interested in except for one. I plan to use the propion aldehyde in a Fischer indole synthesis to produce scatol. Scatol is an interesting molecule which unsurprisingly has the strong smell of feces. So naturally, I would definitely want to make it. So for this experiment, I used 25 milliliters of N-propanol, 33 grams of potassium dichromate, 24 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid, and 200 milliliters of distilled water. To start off, 200 milliliters of distilled water was added to a beaker. Then, with rapid stirring, was added 24 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid. And now for the typical warning, be sure to add acid to water and not the other way around because it can get a little messy and dangerous. Keep stirring it thoroughly until the sulfuric acid is fully mixed into one homogeneous solution. Once this was done, 33 grams of potassium dichromate was added. The addition of the dichromate is in no way exothermic, so you don't need to add it slowly and it can simply be dumped in all at once. With constant stirring, it took several minutes to fully dissolve. Once it's all dissolved, we're left with a nice red chromic acid solution. Then, to a 500 milliliter three neck round bottom flask was added 25 milliliters of N-propanol. Then the oil bath was prepared by adding oil to a crystallizing dish. To one of the necks is added an addition funnel and to this is poured in the chromic acid solution that we made earlier. The addition funnel was then stoppered and held in place using a Keck clip. This reaction requires a somewhat specialized distillation setup. To the middle neck is attached a condenser, but we're not running cold water through it, we're running 60 degrees Celsius water. The trick here is that the end propanol, our starting material, boils at around 97 degrees Celsius, but our product, propionaldehyde, boils at around 50. What this means is that our 60 degrees Celsius condenser will allow the propionaldehyde to pass, but it will actually recondense our starting material. Then, once it passes the hot condenser, we just have a regular simple distillation with a cooling condenser. The reason the setup is important is that we must get the propion aldehyde out of the reaction mixture as soon as it's made. If it stays too long, we risk oxidizing it all the way to the carboxylic acid, which is obviously undesirable. To start off, we bring it to reflux, and we can see that the n-propanol is refluxing back into the reaction flask. Once the reaction is boiling vigorously, we can dropwise add some of the chromic acid solution. You can see that immediately upon addition, it turns a green color. The color indicates that the chromium is going from an oxidation state of plus 6, which is orange, to an oxidation state of plus 3, which is green. This means that it received 3 electrons from the n-propanol, thereby oxidizing it. To keep up a vigorous boiling of the reaction mixture, it's important to add the chromic acid solution slowly. The reaction occurring is shown above, where the n-propanol, which is an alcohol, is oxidized by the sulfuric acid potassium dichromate mixture to the corresponding aldehyde. Eventually, some propion aldehyde vapors will make it past the hot condenser and make it towards the cooling condenser and eventually we'll receive a first exciting drop of propion aldehyde product. To limit loss of the propion aldehyde, I place the receiving flask in a cold water bath. As more and more chromic acid is added, it'll get darker and darker green until it nearly becomes black. Once all of the chromic acid solution has been added, keep boiling it until no more distillate comes over. I boiled it for about 15 minutes after everything had been added. Afterwards, we're finally left with a beautiful small yield of stinky propion aldehyde. Just to remove any possible water, some activated sieves are added. It is stirred over the sieves for several minutes and then a fractional distillation is carried out. To make the distillation faster, I wrapped the column with some paper towel to insulate it. I collected the fraction that boiled between 48 and 53 degrees Celsius. At the end, I was left with a small amount of crystal clear distillate. 
This corresponded to a yield of about 11 milliliters. I stored this in a small amber glass vial with sieves at the bottom to keep it dry. The yield of the propion aldehyde was about 46%. The yield is low, but it's consistent with literature which reports a yield between 45 and 50 percent.